Welcome to the Stairway to Heaven. We're coming to you bringing insights into the ever-changing high-frequency currents now baiting the planet and their effect on us all. The source of vital information for the evolving human being. I'm Gwilda Wiyaka. Empathy, Resonance, and the Unified Field. Many are expressing concern about the intense upheaval we're all experiencing personally and collectively. It does seem like there's more trauma in everyone's life now than in times past. To understand what's going on, we first need to revisit ambient frequency. In the past, when the solar system traversed a lower frequency portion of the galaxy, the Earth was exposed to less light, resulting in an overall lowering of consciousness. During that time, we traded a fair amount of our natural expression for defense mechanisms and operating systems in order to cope with the harshness of living among those with reduced perception, including ourselves. We lived in lower frequency conditions for multiple ages spanning many generations. Thus, the loss of true expression is not only from our personal lifetimes, but handed down as well through altered DNA. This has us hardwired to act outside of our true expression from the get-go. Add to that our stockpile of personal trauma, compensatory defenses, and operating systems, and most of us are a long way from home base. We're now entering a higher frequency area in the sun's cyclic trek through the galaxy. As the light increases, it exposes the damage we've sustained from people acting unconsciously during times of lower frequency. Even more difficult, we're realizing we also have harmed others through our own unconscious actions. At first, we could deal with this unpleasantness by firmly shoving both where we've been damaged and where we've perpetrated damage into denial. Now, however, the increase in frequency is putting enormous pressure on wherever we're not standing in the truth of who we are, our home base. When we deny things, they're stored in our body, distorting it and compromising our true expression. As frequency or light continues to build in intensity, even the dark corners of our individual and collective denials are being exposed. This leaves us nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. When this denied information comes to light, so to speak, it's challenging indeed. If we remain in denial, we do not own what's being forced to the surface. If we don't own it, we can't process it. So soon we're overwhelmed with unprocessed trauma. Lacking the ability to shove the intel back into our unconscious, the next line of defense is to project it outward onto the people, places, and things in our world. When we project negativity into our world rather than process it, we manifest it around us, creating a self-generated hologram of danger and villains from our past and that of our ancestors. We interpret everything through the filter of past trauma rather than clearly seeing the facts at hand. We're so busy dodging the ghosts of our projections onto the present that the ability to cope is further compromised as we're living in a state of fight or flight. Fight or flight takes us out of the front brain, where logic, higher reasoning, spirituality, and love resides, to the back brain, where our only tools are avoidance and aggression. As the ambient frequency continues to rise, all that's not in agreement or alignment with our natural expression is being pushed to the surface to be cleared. This is causing no small amount of angst in every individual and in society at large. The frequency of the collective distress is bleeding over into the unified field and therefore impacting us all. To understand how this bleed over is affecting us, we need to examine resonance. In physics, resonance is defined as a phenomenon in which an external force or vibrating system forces another system around it to vibrate with greater amplitude at a specified frequency of operation. So what does this mean? All frequency runs in a continuum. For example, above the frequency of sound is light, beyond that radiation, and so on. There are frequencies of both light and sound that can extend well above and below the human perception. Although we're not privy to them, they're nonetheless impacting us in interesting ways. As an example, our vision does not pick up ultraviolet rays, nor do we hear or feel them 
but they will burn our skin with overexposure. The same principles apply all along the frequency spectrum. With this in mind, we can explore resonance by working with something we're all familiar with, sound. In sound, the external force, in the definition of resonance I just quoted, might result from striking middle C on a piano keyboard. In this example, C serves as a specified frequency of operation. If there is another stringed instrument in the room with a string tuned to C, that string would be the secondary system forced to vibrate with greater amplitude. In other words, the C string on the stringed instrument would vibrate producing C without being touched by anything but the force of the sound produced by the piano. This phenomenon is called resonance. It may seem a long way around the block, but bear with me. Everything expresses according to frequency. Every emotion has a unique frequency that's particular to that feeling. As we experience emotion, that frequency is expressed into the world impacting everything around it, including the unified field, where all things connect. If we do not process our trauma, we'll continue to express it into the world. As the frequency of that particular trauma encounters the same unprocessed trauma in others, it'll activate their personal trauma, causing them to experience it even though its origin is not real and present. Emotion researchers generally define empathy as the ability to sense other people's emotions. Resonance is the foundation of empathy. To the degree we're conscious and not in denial of our feelings, when impacted with the frequency coming from others activating feelings in us, we'll recognize that we're empathing the feeling. In other words, the stimulus is coming from someone else rather than real and present danger in our environment. With this awareness, we can avoid engaging the trauma, which would throw us into fight or flight and the back brain, depriving us of all reason and logic. We can instead recognize someone else's feelings are resonating with one of our own, thereby amplifying it. We can discern it's from the past and set it aside for further processing, rather than give it our agreement and participation. If, however, we're unprocessed and in denial, we'll experience the feeling as if it originates in us. We'll perceive it as real and present danger in our environment. This throws us into fight-or-flight response, all logic and higher reasoning shuts down, and with it, our resources to correct the situation. In addition, we give the impact feeling our agreement, further amplifying their frequency and adding to the general din. Now, as the amplitude mentioned in this example, the secondary system, forced to vibrate with greater amplitude, is us. Oh, joy. Soon we find ourselves not only in resonance with overwhelming emotion, but experiencing it at a greater intensity, supporting the perception that the world is a dangerous place and we need to be in battle stance, always looking for the enemy at large. We then project those feelings into our onto our innocent neighbors, and they become the villain. This is the foundation of mob mentality, leading to lynchings, violent riots, and genocide. When multiple people are in resonance, feedback occurs. One form of feedback is the high-pitched howling noise heard when there's a loop between a microphone and a speaker. If not dealt with, feedback will continue to rise in amplitude and intensity until it blows the entire system. The increasing light on the planet is pushing all our unprocessed emotion to the surface at the same time. If we don't stay on top of it, uncover and deal with our own emotions, we're subject to resonance. Resonance is followed by an increase in amplitude that impacts and is reflected back by others in a giant feedback loop. Currently, the intensity of that feedback loop is about to blow our system. This is evidenced by the increase in social upheaval we've been witnessing in the world at large. Another interesting quality of sound that also applies is that sound waves interact. When a note is sounded in a sound chamber at a particular wavelength and volume, then another note is added at identical wavelength and volume 
one would think the result would be twice the volume. In fact, the volume well more than doubles. If, however, a sound wave of the same volume but exact opposite wavelength is introduced into the chamber with the first note, it results in silence as the two cancel each other out. This phenomenon offers a convincing argument for the value of staying neutral, grounded, and centered during upheaval. If a person can remain at home base, centered in who they are, and calm in the midst of highly charged emotions, they can actually counteract the hype and hysteria by offering the equal but opposite wavelength through expressing calm. The same holds true of the frequency of love. Two people expressing it more than doubles its volume. Love is a powerful mitigating force capable of breaking the feedback loop of hysteria and trauma. When increasing numbers hold a grounded, loving center, the resulting resonance will go a long way towards canceling out the trauma that's threatening to overtake the populace. With the aforementioned stockpile of personal trauma, compensatory defenses, and operating systems between us and our home base, it's very hard to remain calm and centered and aligned with the love. It's also difficult for us to know who we are. If we don't know who we are, if we're not living from our true expression, we have no way of discerning where the overwhelming emotions are coming from. In lack of this recognition, it's impossible to own and process our portion. We end up not only along for the ride, but contributing to it. The more we can own and process the emotions coming from our personal and ancestral damage, the less we resonate with the trauma bombarding the unified field. The more processed we are, the less susceptible we are to outside influences, making it easy to stay centered in our true nature and not be pulled off by the expression of others. The key to being a grounded force in the world for yourself and others during times of intense upheaval is processing. When engaging in processing, when engaging in processing there's no canned answer for everyone. Each of us has different aptitudes and damage requiring a unique approach. Fortunately, there are many powerful forms available to us, such as psychotherapy, counseling, Reiki, emotional freedom techniques, rebirthing, breathwork, and shamanism, to name just a few. In addition, one technique or combination of techniques may work well on one issue, while another requires a different approach and a different set of forms. What works well for one person may not work on the same issue for another, and so on. Many of these forms are not regulated, so one also needs to be mindful to find a highly qualified, well-trained practitioner. In the absence of regulation, I suggest reverting to the way the ancients chose their healers by asking, what are the people saying? There are many outstanding practitioners who are not regulated as well as some hacks that are. Regulated or not, the proof is in the pudding and people are known by their works. What remains hidden at one frequency becomes exposed when the frequency rises. Therefore, while we're continuing to experience rising ambient frequency, processing will need to be an ongoing thing for us to stay ahead of the power curve. It's also the tool of our deliverance and the key to consciousness and enlightenment. I understand that processing can be a lot of unpleasant, difficult work, but it does come down to whether you want to be part of the solution or part of the problem. The unified field by its very nature holds and connects everything. It's up to us to decide what we want to receive from it and what we choose to contribute to it. It is, after all, a simple matter of resonance. Thank you for joining me, Gwilda Wiecka, on the Stairway to Heaven, where we provide the updates on the energetic currents facilitating our evolution into conscious, powerful co-creators. As I'm sure you've noticed, not only do the Stairway to Heaven episodes stand alone, but they weave together to form a map to evolution and personal empowerment as we enter the new era. To revisit this or any of our past episodes, visit our archives at www.stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. If you'd like to find out more about me, my school, and the evolutionary tools we offer, visit www.findyourpathhome.com. 
Until next time, may you be blessed on your sacred path to wholeness. We are here. The time is now.